guys, it's Trice here with a tutorial video on how to make your automation bait car into a genuine hybrid vehicle in BMG Drive. While automation doesn't support hybrid or electric motors in the game as of right now, you can do some file editing and add an electric motor to your gas engine to significantly improve performance. Before starting off, the following program I'm going to use in this video is Notepad++, which is a free file editing program. If you don't have this installed, the link to download it is in the description below. So first things first, you need to have any automation made car you have available that's been exported to BMG Drive. For this car, I'm using a 90s concept sports sedan that rivaled the Acura NSX called the Felge MGT. Its rear-wheel drive weighs around 2,800 pounds and has a decent 3.2 liter, 248 horsepower Boxer 6 engine. Assuming you're going to export your car, you go to the model configuration tab and click on the check mark which brings up the summary of your car. On that menu, click on the BMG logo to bring up the vehicle export menu. You can also do this in the main menu under Car Designer, then you click on the car you want to export and again, click on the BMG logo. When you've got a name for your car, go ahead and export it. This should take about a minute for it to export depending on how much work you've put in your car. Once that's done, we'll get out of automation and open up BeamNG Drive. For the editing portion of the video, you go into BeamNG to prepare to unpack the car's file. Once you're in the main menu, you click on the repository menu. Next, you click on Mods Manager on the top left portion of the screen. Then, you find the name of the file of the car you've just exported, which in this case, it's called tries underscore felge underscore mgt underscore concept. Once you find the file that you want, click on unpack to properly unzip the file so they can be edited seamlessly. After it has been unpacked, you should see the open and explore button become visible. You click on it to open up the file explorer that takes you to the exact file you just unpacked. Once you see the art and vehicles folders show up in the file, you go into vehicles, then you go into the car's folder name, and right here, find the file name, camzo underscore engine dot jbeam. This is where your car's engine performance data is stored for your vehicle. So you see here, we've got hundreds of lines of code that make up the engine for this car. So now let's add the code to apply the hybrid motor to this car. The first thing we're going to do is to add the following piece of code, which is left bracket, quotation mark, camzo underscore electric underscore motor, quotation mark, comma, quotation mark, camzo underscore hybrid, quotation mark, comma, space, quotation mark, hybrid, space, motor, quotation mark, right bracket, and a comma. What I've done is that I've gave the parameters to make way for the electric motor, which you'll see later on in the video. The first section is the engine type, the second one is the default parameter of the electric motor, and the third one is the name that I've given, which you'll see in the parts selector in BMG Drive. For the next piece of code, you scroll down quite a bit until you see the differential configuration under powertrain below the vehicle controller group at around like lines 240. Right below the differential hyperlink, you can copy and paste the existing differential code for the gas engine. When you copy the code, place it right underneath the gearbox differential code. Now, we got to change it up to introduce the motor to the vehicle. To do this, you change the differential name to Motor Diff, the input name to Front Motor, and change the gear ratio to a 4. You may need to change the ratio in case the motor kicks it too fast, too slow, or produces a higher low top speed, which we'll do that later on in the video. Next, we would have to connect the motor to the wheels, whether if it's the front or the rear. In this particular case, it's the front because the car's rear-wheel drive. So just like the differential code, you copy the drive shaft lines for the gas engine's drive wheels and paste them right below. The changes we have to make are the names and where the motor has to go to connect to the wheels. So change the wheel axles rear left and rear right to front left and front right. Then, you change the name of the differential name, which is Motor Diff. And the connected wheels, change them from the rear to the front for the left and right ones. 
And again, this is for a rear-wheel drive configuration. If you had done a front-wheel drive configuration, then you pretty much just do the opposite. Instead of the drive wheels for the electric motor to be on the front, it has to be placed on the rear. Now to add the performance values and other necessary information to the motor. For that, we scroll down right below the gas tank to insert the code. Right now, I'm going to copy and paste it right into the file. The exact code is provided in the description since it'll take too long to insert them manually. But first, let me fix the code to make this the rear motor to a front motor. Just give me a second. So, to explain the important lines of code that differ from the gas engine to the hybrid motor, well, you can see most of the code retains from the engine except for a handful of changes, such as the first line in the group called camso underscore hybrid, which is the same exact string from the beginning. It differs the name from the engine to this here electric motor, which is followed by the name hybrid motor. Now, right here, I got the performance values from 0 to 8,000 RPM with the torque right next to it. It has roughly 200 pounds-feet of torque at 0 to 5,000 RPM and exponentially drops to its lowest at 71 pounds-feet at 8,000 RPM. It's the same torque rating as my original hybrid car called the Atlas Fairfax that I've made a month before making this video. Lastly, you got the top speed limit set at 134.112 thousandths meters per second, which equals to 300 miles per hour, which is plenty for any car. This surprisingly doesn't affect the car in any way in terms of acceleration, top speed, or anything relating to performance. The only thing that pretty much affects the performance is the torque rating and the gear ratio for the motor. The last major piece of code you add is the battery to the vehicle. So I'm going to copy and paste it in as so. I got this from the Hirochi ESBR, which is the electric variant of the SBR by Beam&G. It's been modified to get the basic information of this battery to be placed in this vehicle. It doesn't have any nodes, beams, or any lines of code that deform the battery upon collision. Now, it's best to double check the entire file to see if there are any possible errors that could cause the car to not load. After visually verifying the file, click on the save button on the top left portion of your screen or hit Control S to save it. Then, you load up any map in Beam&G. For the sake of this video, let's go to Grid Small Pier since it's very simple and it doesn't need a lot of time to load in. So here's the car spawned up. I do have the powertrain map and torque curve set up. As you can see, the motor is connected to the front of the vehicle, but the torque curve is not updated. That's because it relies on the gas engine's power and torque rating and not the hybrid motor. So no matter what, if you alter the torque rating of the motor, this won't update at all. So now, set the accelerator and see how the car behaves. I'll also spawn a copy of this car without the motor for comparison with how much of a difference in performance this is. If you notice that the motor kicks in too strong, too weak, or has a low top speed, you need to edit the torque values to alter the power of the electric motor. For the top speed, you change the gear ratio to make it taller or shorter than it currently is. So now, let me try to perfect this car in Notepad++ again. So back into that program, find out why your car is behaving awkwardly in terms of performance. If it's a power issue, change the torque that suits your vehicle. Like if it's too weak, you increase the torque values by like whatever, 50 or 100 pounds feet of torque. If it's too strong, then decrease the values that's a little bit more suited for the vehicle. So you're not generating a crap ton of wheel spin or make a Toyota Prius run like a Lamborghini. If you got a top speed issue, change your gear ratio to get a more optimal top speed to match what you got in automation. Once you've made any changes to the car's file, you need to save it again. Going back to Beam&G, you hit Control r to reset the simulation. It will reload the car in its entirety to read the new file changes that you made to this vehicle. After it has been respawned, drive the car again and take note of any more problems you still have with your car. If you're satisfied with your results, then you're good. If you still have troubles, continue altering the torque and gear ratio values to get it right. So let me explain what I've done here. So I did alter the torque rating in the max RPM to 8500 RPM. So for the torque rating, I got up to the max of 8500 RPM with the max torque. 
at its lowest of 102, I think pounds feet of torque this is, or newton meters, I don't know. But it's at 102, and the max RPM is set to the highest of 8500 RPM for the electric motor only. Alright, just to wrap this up, let's compare the difference between the stock MGT and the hybrid model. The one in red is the hybrid version, and the one in green is completely stock. So first things first, let's compare the 0 to 62 times with both cars right now. So with the hybrid, despite being around 247.5 horsepower, it's much, much quicker than the stock one, hopefully. So we do get a 0 to 62 time in 4.83 seconds of 253.80 feet. Now let's head out over to the stock one. Same thing, hit the gas pedal with this one to get a 0 to 60 time with the stock variant. And we can already tell it's not going to catch up with the hybrid bottle. It seems like it, and yes, it hasn't. <laughs> so the 062 time is 0 0.03 seconds of 320.10 feet. As you can see, it does work and really improves the performance with this here hybrid vehicle. And what's also interesting, if I turn the car off in the hybrid model and I hit the gas pedal, you could, you could drive with just the motor alone. But as you see here, it's not going to be fast, but <laughs> this shows you proof that the motor does work and you don't even need the gas engine. But if you don't even have to use a gas engine, it's going to take a while to reach a top speed or 0 to 60, but it just shows you that the motor does work. So that'll do it with automation and BMG Drive with making a hybrid vehicle. Since automation isn't going to implement hybrids anytime soon at the moment, I guess this video makes it happen, which pretty much fills that in. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up and signing out.